You ever just sit in the theater after a movie and kind of just like sit there and wonder like, what did I just watch? Because that just happened to me. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carter Walker. I love talking about movies, music, comics, and games. And I just saw Stop Motion um, just a few days ago. I was going to record this yesterday. I didn't quite get the chance to. But I went out and saw it because I was home for spring break, even though it's February. I don't know. Ask my college why they did that. And I went out and saw Stop Motion, which is a small independent horror film directed and written by Robert Morgan. This is a movie that I had never heard about before until about a week ago. I went into this film completely blind, and that's what I would recommend for you if you're thinking about seeing this film. So from here on out, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to give a brief synopsis and kind of run through my review of the film. If you're interested, go check out the film and then come back to this review if you don't care about spoilers that's fine just you know go through it and let me know sorry i adjusted my mic a little bit so this might be a little bit better but stop motion is a live action horror film that blends elements of animation and stop motion hence the title and it's directed and written by robert morgan and it follows a young woman named ella who is played by and i'm gonna butcher this name eileen franciosi i might just totally have butchered that i do apologize it follows ella her mother is a very prolific and renowned animator who makes stop motion films and Ella helps her out with animation, and it follows her after a hard time with her mom, and she tries to deal with the demons, and she tries to finish a film that her and her mom are working on. With all of that little precursor out of the way, I can get into the positives of this film, and the biggest positive, the big thing that I can give this movie, is the performance of Eileen, the lead actress as Ella. She is phenomenal playing this woman who seems stable but has a lot more going on underneath the surface and I thought she did a really excellent job of just portraying like simple madness and just a drive to finish something and she's this woman who has been told what to do her entire life and maybe she wants to have these ideas of her own come into fruition and come into play and I thought that aspect of someone being a puppeteer and also being a puppet was actually very clever and I liked quite a bit of the dialogue and dynamics surrounding that. For me, that was one of the most engaging things in the film. <clears throat> the performances all around are actually fairly decent. Tom York does a good job as this dude named Tom. <laughs> he is just like, you know, your straight man in the horror film trying to help Ella. And the effects as well are just phenomenal. The effects are very, very haunting. There's a lot of sequences here that are just like very simple stop motion effects and just like the look of the dolls is just like kind of gross like it just kind of creeped me out makes me feel uncomfortable and you get to see a lot of stop motion elements in this film you get to see the film that Ella makes play out and it gets played you know as a stop motion film and it looks phenomenal you can tell everyone involved with the stop motion aspects has had a lot of experience in that medium and so that helped quite a bit to kind of just sell that and hammer that point home. As for the story itself, I thought it was decent. I do have um, a little bit of criticism that I will bring in in the mix, but the setup was very, very intriguing and I was really interested to see where it would go. And I would be totally like pissed at myself if I didn't touch on the phenomenal sound design in this film. The sound design is what makes this movie, honestly. There was a lot of issues that I have with this movie, but the sound design is perfect from top to bottom. The sound of the armature, a word I learned from this film, inside the puppets and it like creaks a little bit with the wood, they interpret, or wow, they incorporate that so well throughout the film. Um, maybe if Ella is having like a dream and when she moves, you hear a little bit of the creaking in the wood. Just little subtle things like that made this film so much creepier. It just makes it a little bit more uneasy, a little bit more unnerving, and I really appreciated that and a sound design as well. It incorporates Ella's breathing throughout, so if she's really stressed or having like a moment, you'll hear breathing and it's just drowning out the rest of the sound. It's very intense and just unnerving throughout. So the sound design, far and away one of the best things about this film. Cinematography, a lot of the cinematography was very, very well done. There's a few shots, especially in a stairway, that I thought were exceptional. It does a really good job with raising the tension and keeping it throughout. And along with that, the editing, I think, was exceptional as well. There's a few editing choices in here where I was like, why did we do that? That's a little weird. A few like rough cuts, like rough editing moments. But other than that, um, those are all my positives for the film. The big takeaways for me was the lead performance and the sound design. Those were phenomenal. In getting into my mix, this is where I'm going to get into the writing and the story quite a bit. Just because I felt like it started out very strong with a good promising way to go, a good promising path forward. But I think that it just lost a little bit of its momentum as the film went on. 
especially with how it goes with the story. And I'm going to get into some slight spoilers here. If you really don't want to know anything about the movie Stop Motion, turn off now. Like I said, go watch it. Or if you don't care, keep watching. If you've seen the movie, keep watching. The biggest issue that I had with this film, and it's just an issue that it's just a personal thing. That's why it's in the mix. I just don't like when they do what's real, what's not in horror films. I think in my opinion, it's a very cheap way to get easy scares out of your audience and bend a reality without doing anything like extremely creative. And that hurts to say, because this movie is extremely creative to where if they had leaned into the stop motion animation and just been like, yeah, this is crazy. Like we're all, we're going all in on this. And it's not like maybe she's losing her mind. You don't know. I find things like that to be a little bit of a cop-out. I really only like it in Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan, and even then it still kind of bugs me. I just don't like when they're like, maybe it was a dream, maybe she's uh, losing her mind, you don't know, you'll never know. And so when stuff like that happens, and I'm not saying that's how the film ends, I'm not, I, I didn't really give anything away there, I think even watching the trailer after I've watched it now, you can see that. It's just frustrating to me when writers do that because then they can just lean into all the crazy things that happen in the film and then just not try and explain any of it and not try and lean into anything that would make it fun or interesting. They're just like, yeah, she's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's just, you know, it's deranged. And I was like a little bummed at that. That's just a personal thing. That's why it's in the mix. I know some people really love that. I have a friend that is like his whole thing is just people losing their minds in movies. It's like his type of movie. And I'm like, dude, you should go see this movie. <laughs> But for me, I just didn't buy into it. I just didn't really care for that aspect. And so when I saw that they were going with that like tortured artist, like it's very, very bit of a trope in the genre where it's like tortured artist, you know, the more they put into their art, the more they lose their mind. And we've seen it before. It wasn't anything new or familiar. And it's done in a unique way with the stop motion. But other than that, it just didn't really interest me. And so with the characters here, Ella is good. I was interested in her journey, but about halfway through the film, I could see where they were going with it. Not even halfway, about 30 minutes into the film, I could see where they were going with this movie. I could see everything was pretty telegraphed, and so that was quite a bit of a bummer when everything was just written on the wall, and you can see easily where the direction of the film is going to be taken. You can see where everything's going to go, and there's not really a lot of surprises in that movie. Once you figure that out, and you kind of put two and two together, maybe that's just me, but I put two and two together, and I was like, oh, that's where this is going. Okay. Getting into the negative here, the ending didn't land for me at all. Like I mentioned in my mixed, I could see where this was going from about 30 minutes in. And once I saw that, I was a little disappointed with how the ending went. I was like, okay, yeah, this is how it's going to go. It played out exactly like how I kind of guessed it would. And that's on me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that, but <laughs> it's just how I work in movies sometimes. And being predictable isn't a bad thing, but I do think for a horror film where it's kind of playing the guessing game of like, what's real, what's not, Having something be predictable is a bad thing. So as for like an action movie, you know, being being predictable is fine. Some horror movies being predictable is fine. But for this, it's like the type of subgenre where you don't want it to be predictable. And that's unfortunately what it was. And the ending didn't really land for me. There's a little bit of symbolism and imagery here that I just didn't really get. And my final negative for this film is that just it wasn't a movie that was on my wavelength. It's very grotesque in a way that's not quite fun. Sometimes movies can pull off the grotesque and gross and fun aspect. And for me, uh, I have a specific taste when it comes to horror movies, and it didn't quite fall on my specific wavelength. Like I mentioned, if this sounds like something that you would love, or if you read the synopsis, see the trailer, you're like, I think I'd love that. Go check it out. It's extremely well done. Everything about it that I didn't like is honestly just a personal preference. I really think that the only like true weakness here would be the writing direction that it goes, that it takes in the last half of the film. Other than that, everything is superb. Everything is very, very well made. And so this is a movie where I'm like, it hurts to give it a score that I don't exactly love. Um, this is a movie where overall I would give it probably like a five and a half out of 10, just because this is a movie that walking out, I just felt gross. I didn't feel like I had just seen something that really resonated with me. I was like, Ugh, I feel, I feel icky. <laughs> so, and maybe it did its job, you know, that's what it's supposed to do. So if this seems like a movie that you would like, I would recommend going and checking it out or it will be on Shudder, I believe, in May. So all in all, stop motion, again, gets a five and a half out of 10 for me. And it'll be a cow bummer dude from me, where it's kind of in the middle. Um, it's kind of where the rating system is gonna fall, it's in the middle. But all in all, guys, I'm about to see Dune part two in like an hour and a half. So I'm gonna try and get this review out as soon as possible. 
Dune Part 2 will be on my channel on Friday, so if you're interested in seeing my thoughts on that, feel free to check that out. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support. I'm so close to 400. This has been sick. Yeah, let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of stop motion, if you loved it, if you hated it. As always, I'm Carter, and have a great rest of your day.